Lord, if that's really you, then bid me to come out unto you on the water. Peter's like, if Jesus is doing it, I want to do it too. I want to experiment. This is a new thing. I want to give it a try. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Pretty cool, isn't it? Here's what happens when you begin to experiment. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. What did Jesus tell him to do? Be not afraid. What happened? He was afraid. See, faith and fear are opposites. You know, you can lay hands on somebody and faith is there. And as they start to come up out of the wheelchair, they haven't been out. Now they have a choice. Is the anointing there to bring them out? And they're looking you in the eyes. It's important you keep your eyes in their eyes because they'll see the faith of Christ in you because Christ in you, the hope of glory, will be looking at them. And if they keep their eyes on you, they'll come up out of that wheelchair. But if they start looking at the circumstances, fear will come in and they'll go back down. That's how healings happen. That's why sometimes in a corporate atmosphere of faith, people get healed, they leave the corporate atmosphere, they lose their healing. Because faith cometh by hearing. If hearing... If, if faith cometh by hearing, that means faith can go with by hearing something else, can't it? <clears throat> Maybe hey, faith has legs, I don't know. Okay. So, bid me to come. Here's what happens. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? The word little faith here isn't the word size, it's endurance. Because he had more faith than the 11 in the boat. <coughs> Point. When you come from the outer courts into the inner courts, you're going to have to leave 11 of your friends behind. That's it. That's and they're going to tell you, whoa, right. don't be a granola bar Christian, Bill. Don't be flaky, fruity, and nutty. Don't go into that whole, don't go into the inner courts where they speak in tongues. That's it. That's don't it. do that. Stay out here where it's safe. Please. Where we yeah. haven't seen a sign or a wonder in years. Yeah. And the last time somebody got saved, we made them twice as out of hell as we are. So that they would be there. Because we love to castrate people with our religion and make them unfruitful. Woo. And we got every kind of rule and regulation known to man. Uh, yeah. And we give them that book. When they get saved, you talk about the Bible, oh no, no, our denominational rule book. <laughs> We've got to keep them out of here where it's safe in the boat. When you start moving forward into the things of God, you might stand in the miracle one minute, and you might sink into the circumstances the next, but the good news is, all you got to do is call on Jesus, and He'll put you safely back in the boat until it's time to experiment again. Amen. Peter was impetuous. But let me share something with you about Peter. Peter made some colossal mistakes, didn't he? Yep. Walked on water and sank. Denied Christ three times. That's pretty colossal, isn't it? I know you've never done that. Watch out. Might have to sacrifice the pet lamb over it. Anyway, Peter cut off a centurion's ear. Peter also had some great advances. He did walk on water, which the other 11 didn't. He also knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Then Peter, after he had that revelation, prophetic people have a tendency to be prophetic one minute when they're young in the Lord, growing from grace to grace and glory to glory and faith to faith. And the next minute they could become pathetic. Right? How do I know that? Because I'm still growing. One minute they're prophesying, the next minute they're in their soulish realm, or their flesh, thinking they're speaking for God. Because we grow in this thing. They go from prophesying to prophet lying. Right? That doesn't mean God doesn't love them, but trust me, He's wanting to circumcise some things out of them. But religion says, don't ever prophesy to me again. You missed it in the spirit. You are a false prophet and I castrate you. You will never bear fruit again in this congregation. That's religion. That's religion. But relationship says, get up, try again, prophesy according to your faith, and let others stand by and judge to see if this thing be of God. We want to nurture you in your teaching gift or preaching gift or musical gift or gift of hospitality or gift of giving. 
You may have made a mistake, but God will rescue you when you call on Him and you've sunk into the circumstances and the mire of life when the winds became boisterous and you will be resurrected with your feet back on solid ground and you'll have one more experience under your belt so you can learn what not to do next time mm -hmm. as well as what to do. Right. Acts chapter 3, Holy of Holies, commanding faith. Luke chapter 5, outer courts, obedient faith. Matthew chapter 14, inner courts, experimental faith. Acts chapter 3, holy of holies, commanding faith. Is this good? Yeah. Say, mmm, mm. strong me. Oh. Don't choke. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up and together unto the temple at the house of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, by the way, that's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, a certain man, from, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. You ever see somebody at a stoplight asking for alms? Right? Sometimes you're led to give. Other times you're really not wanting to smoke, support the smoking and the drinking habit. Or the shooting habit. But other times, God tells you to give even if they use it for the wrong thing. Because it's Him giving them grace through you instead of your religious guilt because you're doing better than them giving which is unsanctified mercy, when you show mercy on someone God's not showing mercy on. And when you don't release mercy on somebody that God's asking you to show mercy on, that's religious selfishness. Because you've judged them. That's why it's so important to be led by the Spirit. So what happens if you start to give to a few and you miss it? What have you lost? Your coffee money at Starbucks? Give it a try. Step out of the boat. Two sides to every coin. Anyway, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried when they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. See, we've got to make it practical application. It's not just a history book. It's the word of the living God. How does it apply today in 2012 on the streets of Kansas City? How does it apply in the workplace? How does it apply in the family? Otherwise, it's just an academic teaching that's going to make you more knowledgeable. But knowledge puffs up, whereas love builds up. Verse 3, who seeing Peter and John go into the temple, ask alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes on him, with John, said to the man, look on us. Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. Expecting to receive something. When you have an expectant spirit, the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Uh -huh. right. yeah. If you expect to receive nothing, you will get exactly what you expect. Uh -huh. But if you expect to receive something, you'll get it, and you'll even get more than you expect. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have that I got with the Lord in the Holy of Holies saturated in His presence, doused it, transformed from glory to glory with His character, His power, His authority. I can only give you what I got. He didn't give me the coins. He didn't give me the gold and silver when I was in there. He gave me something that money cannot buy. And I now give it unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And Peter, with commanding face, said, Lord, if it be thy will. <laughs> you know why people pray, if it be thy will? Because they don't know God's will. Because they're outer courts, Christians, that haven't spent time in the Holy of Holies to hear the voice of the Father, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, to know what their marching instructions are. That's why they can't pray commanding faith. Because they don't have a position that they're standing in the Lord with to command anything. They're looking up at the situation with earthly eyes instead of looking down at the situation, having prayed through with prayer and fasting and hearing the voice of God. 
Is this making some sense? Quick insert. In the outer courts, Philippians 2.5, King James Version says this, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. Outer courts. Inner courts. 1 Peter 4.1 Arm yourself with this same mind. Holy of Holies. 1 Corinthians 2.16, King James Version. But you have the mind of Christ. Which is true. Let this mind be in you. Arm yourself with this mind. Or you have the mind. The answer is all three are true. Which one is true for you? I can tell you by the way that you respond to situations. Sometimes you won't even allow the mind of Christ to be in you. Why? Because you don't want to believe for the miracle. You don't want to come out of the outer court's thinking. You may not want to repent for the things that have come out of your mouth that day. I've been in situations where somebody said, well, let's pray for so-and-so, but I was so mad at him, I didn't even want to pray for him. I had to repent for being angry before I could effectively pray for him and intercede. I would rather be in the ministry of accusation than the ministry of intercession. Whose father was mine in that moment? By my actions, I had switched camps for a moment. But with repentance and the washing of the water of the word, the Holy Spirit rises up again. And now we can have compassion. So, Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you. 1 Peter 4.1, arm yourself with this same mind. 1 Corinthians 2.16, but you have the mind of Christ. Outer courts, let it be in you, allow it. Inner courts, take action. Holy of holies, you have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> be not conformed to the pattern of this world, Romans 12.1 says. Come out from among them. But be ye transformed through the renewing of your mind, that you might know what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect will of God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights, James 1.17. Who does he give the good gifts to? Maybe those in his good will, I don't know. Who does he give the hundredfold harvest for? Those that are li Do you see? This isn't a performance thing. However, if we respond to the grace that's been given, won't we go on under perfection and climb higher and higher with God? And if not, doesn't attitude determine altitude? Yeah. Well, wait a second. Why does this happen to so-and-so and so-and-so? -and -so? I don't know. Maybe one is operating in the law of sin and death and the other is operating in the law of righteousness. I don't know. Maybe one's operating in the law of gravity and that's why they can't seem to get... The other one's operating in the law of avionics or aerodynamics and they're flying above the situation. Well, David, are you saying that there's more than one law? Yeah, there's seven in the New Testament. That's another message. But we grow in grace, don't we? <clears throat> Silver and gold have I none, such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, the right hand, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Do you see the threes? Do you see the threes? Let me just read some of them to you. Peter, do you love me? Do you agape o me? Do you love me with the love of God? Eh, I phileo you, you know, with Philadelphia, brotherly love. As long as, you know, we got the same ideas with you until the wheels fall off, Jesus. <laughs> Peter, do you got bail me? <clears throat> well, you, you know that I've always filleted you, you know, if you're like, cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, do you filleted me? Yeah, yeah, you know I filleted you. Jesus condescended to his level. Why? Because he couldn't handle more. But how did Peter's life end? And that's the good news tonight. It doesn't matter where you started. We all start in Romans 6 in the outer courts. We all start at salvation with Jesus. But 
let's not end there. We all make mistakes. We might deny Christ in one form or another. We might cut off a centurion's ear with an email. Tell the truth, shame the devil. We might walk on water for a second and sink, but he pulls us back up. It's The race is not to the swift or to the strong, but to those that endure until the end. You know, your life may be revealed in snapshots to some people, to God. It's a motion picture. Don't you want to see the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul? Finally, in Acts chapter 5, and we are closing, this is how Peter's life ends. In Acts chapter 5, the same Peter who said, I know what I'm doing on this fishing thing, nevertheless, it's your word, I'll give it a try. I'll put down one net, not two. Partial obedience, disobedience. God blessed his partial obedience because that's where he was at. He'll bless your and my partial obedience because he allows us to get away with more in the outer courts. But what you can get away with in the outer courts will get you killed in the Holy of Holies. If you don't believe me, ask Ananias and Sapphira who dropped dead in the presence of God in Acts chapter 5 for lying to the Holy Ghost. When the anointing and the presence and the power of God is in the house, conviction to circumcise hearts is quick. When the presence of God is withdrawn, people can get away with almost anything. Now they'll have to give an account for it on the day of judgment. But wouldn't you rather be judged now than later? If we would judge ourselves, we would not have to be judged. If we would judge ourselves, we'd come out of the outer courts of Egypt and we'd move on under perfection. If we judge ourselves in our prayer life, if we judge ourselves in our fasting life, if we'd put down the Twinkies, we could move on under perfection and get the true manna that comes down from above that nurtures our soul. Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira are dead in the presence of God. New Testament, by the way, loving Jesus, mm -hmm. merciful Jesus, he's not in the manger anymore. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 14. Let's just verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and the rest durst and no man join himself unto them, but the people magnified them. Verse 14, and believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Great revival taking place, signs and wonders, the power of God is released. It's not just one guy at the gate, beautiful now. All kinds of people are getting healed with demonstrative acts of the Holy Spirit moving in people's lives to save, heal, rescue, cast out demons, set people free. They had unity in the church. All men had all things in common. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every single one of them. Doesn't matter whether you started in Romans 6, you're struggling in Romans 7 right now, and you're moving on to Romans 8. It doesn't matter whether you've been in the outer courts, you're moving through the wilderness where God's getting the wild in us out, you're moving on into the Holy of Holies. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made because every day His mercies are new every morning. Put those things behind you and don't let religion cut you off and make you unfruitful, but press on. If you've made a mistake and you sunk into the circumstances, call on Jesus. He'll put you back in the boat until it's time to call on Him again to experiment a little bit more. Peter's life that started with obedient faith and moved to experimental faith and then finally was in commanding faith where he spoke to sicknesses and he spoke to diseases and signs were wrought forth through his hands. God said, I can trust him with more because he so yielded to me. Now it's me shining out of him because he's my representative. He represents me to the people. His flesh is out of the way. It's no longer Peter's will. But it's mine that's done through his life. I can trust him to demonstrate the adumbration of my glory. 
and to heal the sick and to set the captives free. He doesn't even have to use my name anymore because it's me flowing through him. He's so crucified with Christ. It's no longer him who lives, but it's me that lives my life through him. And demons were cast out. Not because of Peter's shadow, because if it was really Peter's shadow, it would only work on a sunny day. It was the adumbration, the episkizo in the Greek language. It's the same